In this screencast, we'll look at a second example of using a correlation to find, in this case, a surface temperature for a cylinder and cross flow. And the correlation we're going to use in this screencast is what's known as the Zoukakis correlation. And it's very similar to the Hilbert correlation that we saw in a previous screencast. So again, we're going to have a thin wire and we're going to use the exact same variables. So we're going to have a thin wire. Heat is dissipated from it to air flowing by with convection and the velocity of the air is 75 meters per second. The diameter of our wire is 0.4 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. We also have our bulk temperature of the air, which is equal to 25 degrees C. And we have our heat transfer rate from the wire to the air per unit length, and that's going to equal 25 watts per meter. And our goal, using our governing equation, is to find our surface temperature under these conditions. So we can rewrite this in terms of the surface temperature such that the surface temperature is equal to that Q prime divided by H. And by the way, that's the average heat transfer coefficient plus T infinity. And in this case, what we're going to do is find our Nusselt number, as shown up here, which allows us to find the heat transfer coefficient. So for this particular problem, what we're going to need to do is find the Reynolds number. So our Reynolds number is just velocity times diameter divided by the kinematic viscosity. And from that, we'll find the constants C and M. Our N is going to be equal to 0 0.36 for a Prandtl number that's less than 10. And since this is air, it's more on the order of 0 0.7. And then we have this ratio of Prandtl numbers that takes into account the Prandtl number at the surface. Now, unlike most of the other correlations, our properties are looked up at not the film temperature, but the properties are looked up at the bulk temperature, except for our Prandtl number at the surface, which is looked up at the surface temperature. So let's take a look at the properties that we're going to need in order to solve this. So the first thing we're going to need in order to get the Reynolds number is the kinematic viscosity. So we look up our properties at 298K, and we find that this kinematic viscosity is equal to 15.8 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. And when we calculate this, what we end up with is a Reynolds number that's equal to 1900. Now, in order to find our C and our M, we look it up on the table below based on the Reynolds number. In this case, our C is going to be equal to 0 0.26, and our M is equal to 0 0.6. So let's put this into our Nusselt number equation. So our Nusselt number, and again, it's an average Nusselt number, is equal to 0 0.26. And we multiply that by Reynolds number to the M, which is 0 0.6 times our Prandtl number, which we looked up as 0 0.71. And that's raised to the N, which is 0 0.36. 
And finally, we multiply that whole thing by that ratio of Prandtl numbers. However, we don't know what the surface temperature is, so we're going to have to guess. And based on what our previous example, I guessed around 40 degrees for our surface temperature. So that gives us a ratio of 0 0.71 divided by 0 0.7, and this entire thing is raised to the 1 fourth. So our Nusselt number is equal to 21.4. So from this Nusselt number, we can figure out this average heat transfer coefficient, which is equal to the Nusselt number, multiplied by the thermal conductivity of the air, which we looked up at 25 degrees C, and we divide this entire thing by the diameter, and we end up with a heat transfer coefficient of 1402 watts per meter squared K. And finally, we can put this in our governing equation to solve for our surface temperature. And we find that our surface temperature is going to end up being 39.2 degrees Celsius. In a subsequent screencast, we'll look at the exact same problem, but we'll use the third correlation that's given, the Churchill-Bernstein.